But first tonight, the bold plan to build a Muslim state within Australia. The warnings have come from nervous insiders. They're Islamic leaders who are pleading with the government to stop it from happening. And as David Richardson reports, they're receiving death threats just for speaking out. Sadly, my religion in the current situation is an absolute mess. I come from a lineage of Islamic leadership. When I am worried about what's happening and what I see from my community and religion, trust me that there's something going on. A stunning admission from the Imam of Peace. The president of the Islamic Association of South Australia, Imam Tahidi, is worried. And he's not alone. Society is still worried. And when it reaches a stage where a Muslim Imam is worried, that's when something needs to be done. Tonight, the Muslim clerics and community leaders and their radical calls for Islam to reform itself and a stark warning of a plan to alter Australia forever to establish a caliphate here, right under our noses. The agenda is to create a country within your country. That's what it is. It's to create another country or another government within the Australian government. That's what I believe is their agenda, these extreme Muslims. Should Sharia law be introduced into Australia? The short answer is no, but if you, there's another problem is that there are many sects within Islam and each sect considers a different version of the Sharia. So which one would you end up following? There are about half a million Muslims currently living in Australia, 2.2% of the population. But according to some, there are plans to massively change those figures. There's a movement in Australia to increase the population of the Muslims. Imam Tahidi believes it's happening now, a plan to build a nation inside our nation. So a Muslim community wants to buy an estate, name the streets Islamic names. Literally, they're naming the streets Islamic names of figures that in history massacred and killed people and there won't be any drinking, there won't be anything un-Islamic. It's a small Islamic country within Sydney. The Imam believes governments need to stop the construction of mosques and community centres and investigate what's really going on. I believe that there needs to be a new government body that investigates everything regarding the Muslim religion in this country starting off with the leaders of the communities. Going even further than Pauline Hansen's calls for a royal commission into Islam in Australia. And they're all coming from the Wahhabi extremist ideology. Sunni community leader Jamal Dawood believes Wahhabi money is funding the expansion attempts in Australia. The finance comes from a wide range of, uh, of sources. Mainly it comes from the Gulf states. Uh, mainly Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar and Kuwait. Jamal Dawood wants the burqa and niqab banned from this country. We are urging authorities to take actions and we want authorities to take actions, serious actions, not only banning niqab and, 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 uh, and burqa. He's no stranger to controversy or attack often threatened, even assaulted for his moderate views. Right on the streets of our biggest city. But Jamal is no longer a lone voice in the wilderness. There is no commandment for the burqa or the hijab to be worn. Moderate Dr. Mustafa Rashid is another calling for change, the moderation of Islam, even allowing Muslims to drink and eat pork. The Quran itself does not uh, say uh, that alcohol is banned. It, it actually has a verse that talks about do not pray while you are drunk. So in other words, the, the problem is with being drunk, not the alcohol itself. But this is what happens when Dr. Rashid takes his views around the world. He's physically attacked. I 
This is about 700 scholars around the world who agree with him, uh, and they are trying with their own resources. They're not being funded by anybody, but they're trying with their own resources to publish uh, the fact that uh, a lot of the uh, heritage of Islamic heritage is actually false. But for their trouble, all three of these men are now subject to ISIS calls for their executions. That's hardly new to them. I have received so many threats in my life that it's become something normal to the point that if I don't receive a death threat, I, I'm surprised why didn't I get a death threat today? What happened? They must be busy with something else. They're busy perhaps trying to ban other things. While trying to shut down the debate, Wahhabi preachers are at the same time railing against everything. From Pokemon Go. To Mickey Mouse. And Tom and Jerry. To Christmas celebrations. And same-sex marriage. The Muslim Imams, what's in their bank accounts? Where it's coming from? Who's funding them? The people who are funding them, are they Australian or are they not Australian? Are they non-Australian government agendas? And to add another worrying layer to this story, there are fears the collapse of ISIS could see radicalised and now well-trained fighters sneak back into Australia, hiding as refugees from Syria or Iraq. I know that in Iraq, ISIS militants have escaped with refugees to Europe. I know. And they do that by covering up. Some of them even dress as women. And they flee the country along with the many people who are seeking a better life. Things need to be very clear when it comes to Islam in this country. Otherwise, I'd have to tell the government in 10, 20 years from now, I told you in 2017 that this was going to happen.